Hi YouTube, in today's video I'm going to be helping you dress for a date. Whether that's your first or hundredth date, I thought you might be interested in how a personal stylist can help you. I'll be getting a little bit more deeper into colour psychology and giving you my take on what I think sexy is and how to dress like that and helping you let your clothing do some of the talking for you this Valentine's Day or whenever you're going dating. So with that said, let's just jump in. Colours. One of the things I keep touching about is red and I'm not going to spend all video talking about it because if you've watched any of my other videos I have mentioned this but it is a great first impression colour. It's memorable and also has the connotations of passion which you probably want to evoke if you're going on a date with someone. Of course it's great to have the right shade for you whether it's this hot red that I am always wearing or a deeper maroon that you feel more comfortable in whatever that shade is doesn't have to be a full outfit in it as I always say. Now red aside here, pink is also a great colour to wear on a date. Like red but a little bit more toned down even if you're wearing a hot pink which is a very fashionable shade. Again it's about finding the right shade of pink for you through colour analysis, finding if it's that baby pink, that hot pink, a nice warm pink, a coral. It's a great colour to have on. It's warm, it evokes the feelings of love and can be really nice like a shirt, a dress, a lipstick, a nail. Pink is a really nice colour to have on too. Another great colour as well is yellow. This colour we associate with happiness, right? It's like sunshine. And who won't want to have a happy date with someone, whether you're doing an activity and you want to get everyone in a nice giggly mood. You could be wearing a buttercup yellow, you could be wearing a nice mustard yellow if that's your shade, which can be just as sexy like a mustard slip dress. Imagine how great that would be. A nice yellow v-neck jumper, whatever it is. Another really good colour is navy blue. This is a really good shade if you're a little bit nervous about this day that you're going on. It's a calming shade. You'll feel calmer in it. It's why a lot of people wear navy blue to negotiate in because the mood is really calm and your head can be in the right place. So that can be a really good colour to choose. It's also a dark shade, a little bit like black, but it tends to suit more people's skin tones than black. As we know, black only suits people with a winter skin tone. That's someone who has a cooler skin tone with pink undertones in it. Not everyone suits black. Navy can be a really good substitute for black because it's still got that dark sensualness that black gives, but it won't drag you down. It won't give you that morbid energy. It won't reflect all the grey in your eyes if you don't want to do that. But again, it's about finding the right shade of navy for you, whether that's a navy with a pinky undertone, which is a little bit more indigo-y, or whether that's a warm navy, whether you're wearing that navy in a jean, whether you're wearing it in a polo neck. So as we know, a lot of people see black as that sexy colour, but it can also be draining if it isn't the colour for you. If you still really want to wear black and it doesn't suit you, then it's about wearing it away from your face. It's not a polo neck if it doesn't suit your face. It could be a nice off the shoulder moment. It could be a deep V moment, which you can also achieve by wearing a shirt unbuttoned if you want to show a little bit more of your skin. <laughs> it could be that that black is the base and then you've got your shade on top of it, whether your shade is a pastel, you've got a pastel floral on top of that black. So you've still got your comfort colour and your sexy colour if that's sexy to you, but it's got a shade that suits you better on top of it. The black could just be a jacket. You can still have it on your person, even if it doesn't suit you, just keep it away and don't have too much of it because it can suck out some of the energy and you don't want a kind of low mood on a date. Some other really good black alternatives is if you still want that kind of dark moodiness is to get the darkest shade in your palette. So that could be a deep brown, that could be a deep charcoal grey, that could be a deep bottly green. If you have a look on the autumn fan for instance, there's a lot of rich tones right on the very end that can still be really good to wear that might not be black, but they're still dark and sexy. Look at this green. This is a great colour to wear on a date. Just as sexy as black, but it might suit your warm skin better than black. 
Really should be getting these out in videos more, right? <laughs> Summer, let's get into your fans. You've got a kind of more muted, faded green. You've got this really lovely, rich, purpley colour that could be nice like as a lipstick or some part of the outfit, which is still like purple and pink and all these warm colours still evoke this kind of lovely feeling. But you've got this grey that can still be really nice if you're a summer to have as a suit. And these really rich browns that are just as good as wearing a black and can be just as sexy. Who wouldn't love a really rich, earthy, browny colour? It's still really romantic, it's chocolatey, it's still just a sensual colour. One colour I would say it's good to avoid if you can on a date is white. I'm only saying this because you don't want to be on edge all evening if you're going out to eat or drink that you're going to spill something on it. You don't want to be on edge in general in a date. You want to be comfortable and confident. So if you're not wearing white, you can relax about spilling something on yourself because there's more of a chance it's going to come out. <laughs> Okay, let's get into it and talk about what is sexy. Now, I know it's personal for everyone what they like, but I believe that you don't necessarily need to show all of your skin all at once to be sexy. If you turn up and everything's showing, it leaves really little to the imagination on a first date. You need to leave something that has them wanting more. In my opinion, the best thing to do is to pick one area to show off. That could be your face, that could be your arms, your hands, your feet, whatever you feel proud of. And making that the area to highlight. Everything else is covered up apart from that one section. It could be, again, your shoulders, you're wearing something off the shoulder, everything else is covered up, but that part, they can't look away. It might be to show your shoulders, you just need to have your hair tied up, and then they're on show. You don't even have your skin out, but they're on show, that's where the eye is being drawn. It could be that you're using colour to highlight the area that you want to highlight. It might be that you're wearing all black below and then you've just got one bright necklace and then they can't stop looking at your neck. It might be that you like your legs and you wear a short skirt, but you don't have to have naked leg out because it is still February and you could still be cold. You could be having a black tight, but you can still see the shape of your leg. A lot of it is just about showing the shape of yourself and it's one of those things that I love saying as a personal stylist, it's about good fit. Fit is so key. If something is hugging you in just the right place, it's not too big, it's not too small, you can see where the lines of your body are, that's sexy. You could be wearing a completely knitted dress and then the lines of the knit is showing off the line of your body that's sexy and you'd be warm even sexier when you're comfortable and confident and like what you're in and you like moving around with the fabric of what you've got on you feel comfortable in what you've got on you feel great in what you've got on then you're gonna look amazing and speaking of being cold in February it's not sexy to be sat there shivering in something that isn't correct and potentially catching a cold in the name of a date that might not even go well you might be hoping they give you your jacket, but it's 2023, how likely is that actually to happen? And they might be giving you their jacket just because they feel bad for you, not because they're like, oh, they look amazing, sat there like this all dinner long. <laughs> and if you want to have that strappy dress, just move my hair out of the way, you could still have that strappy dress here, and you've got something nice and warm underneath, could be a heat tech, could be a jumper, but you can still see I have arms. <laughs> Right, so personality. Of course, showing your personality and feeling confident about yourself is very attractive. There's no point showing up to a first date meeting with someone looking like somebody else because that's not who they signed up to. And if you've watched enough of those cringy movies where someone has dressed up as someone else and there's mistaken identity, they always get found out in the end, so what is the point really? It's nice to make that effort and wear something nicer than usual, but still keep it you and still keep it something that you feel comfortable in. You don't want to be pulling at something that you feel awkward in all evening. You don't want to be wearing something too tight and then feel like you can't eat. 
You don't want to be wearing something that isn't a usual garment for you and looking noticeably awkward in the face which they're going to be looking at. Remember when you're shopping that size is just a number and they're always changing those numbers so really it doesn't matter. What you're looking for is what looks good on your body. Whatever department you find it in, if it's a different number than usual, it's about how you look and how you feel. And in regards to buying clothes for a date, it's great to have something new that feels special and nice, but also try and get something that you'll wear on other occasions. Shopping in general should be for items that you use all the time, not just one-time things that you only get out in one situation. That just feels like a bit of a waste. And it's also great to have something that you can talk about if asked. Perhaps you have a band t-shirt with your suit. It doesn't matter if they don't like that band. They'll love hearing your enthusiasm for it. It'll get conversations going. Maybe you're arguing about if that band is good or not. And yes, you can wear t-shirts on dates, but I'll say pairing them with smarter pieces is the way to go. It's a bit like with the workwear thing. It's about finding that balance between smart and casual. And it's a little bit of an art and it's hard to describe here on video. So it is one of those things that I can help you with in person or you just need to try out a few combos first. As always, be prepared. Don't do anything on the day and then you run out of time and you're in it and you haven't gotten the balance right. If it's a date, plan your outfit the day before. Maybe send some pictures to a friend. Whoever might help you, try a few goes, take a few pictures first and then turn up in it and you'll feel more confident because you know that you're settled in it. If you picked something up last minute and you're like, oh, I just got to go for it, then you're going to be kind of regretting it in your head and you won't mentally be there. So making an effort is important. You don't want to be too try hard, but you should also look like you care enough to have made an effort because they will appreciate that. Make sure that you care enough to match everything. As you know, my bugbear is a stylist, but make sure that everything goes, whether that's your bag, your shoes, and wear things that are in good condition. <laughs> I know that should seem obvious, but it is important because they will look at it and they will judge it because you are in a judging situation here. They might go to their friends and they'll be like, that person was really great, but I just couldn't stop looking at all the moth holes in their jumper the whole night. Story time. When I was working in retail many years ago, I used to help a lot of people on Valentine's Day. I had a girl once that came in, she was in a rush, it was after work, and she was looking for something immediate that she could change into. We settled on this red lace dress, which sounds pretty perfect for Valentine's, right? You've got the lacy romantic fabric it's the bright red everything was perfect she already had heels because she was coming from work she bought it she was about to go she was about to leave and she caught herself in the mirror with her coat on over the top this was a puffy raincoat and against that quite smart dress it just looked wrong it just looked like the final piece of the puzzle was missing so she then in her rush state found the perfect fur coat that tied the whole look together and went with the right amount of smartness for wherever she was going. I can't remember where it was going, but it was quite a nice dress, so it must have been somewhere good. It's important that it's all cohesive. To that person who's seeing her, they might have thought that she'd picked that outfit for ages and she'd always had it in her wardrobe, but actually she just bought it in the moment. And if you think about it, that moment when they see you, you're going to have your coat on unless you've arrived early. And they're going to see you're waving, you're coming up to them. They're going to see your coat first before you've pulled it off and your outfit is underneath. So it's all important. And there are many people that look at shoes and watches and everything that you have on. Now, I wouldn't recommend getting an outfit in a rush like she did. It would be good, as I said, if you can prepare it before. If you know that you're coming from work, try and make your work outfit one that you'd be happy to wear on that day. Sometimes, back in the day, I used to just bring a few extra pieces that I could swap out at the end of my shift to take that outfit into the evening, whether that's just a pair of shoes or a top. But in general, Valentine's and dates aside, shopping shouldn't have to be panic shopping. Shopping should always be thoughtful pieces that you want to wear all the time and not something that you've just bought an hour before where you have to go and you're quickly changing. That shouldn't be how we buy things. I hope that this was a useful video for you or for whoever in your life might need it. 
and I hope you all have a fantastic Valentine's Day however you choose to spend it, whether that's with someone special, with someone you don't know just yet, I hope that goes well, with some friends, whether that's a self-love day. Thank you for watching and goodbye.